Before we dive into this episode, I just want to let you know, if you want to get access to episodes before anybody else, head on over to patreon.com forward slash concerts that made us. And as a bonus, you'll get access to videos of some of the episodes and a host of other benefits. We've also teamed up with Band Builder Academy to offer you 10% off their membership. Details of both can be found in the show notes below. Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Welcome to the podcast, Conscience That Made Us. Interviews and stories, tales from the bus. We love taking you back to when it all went down. The greatest live shows and that cheering crowd sound. It's concerts, concerts that made us, concerts that made us.com. This is Nate. And this is Isaac from Bellwether, and you're listening to Concerts That Made Us.
Guys, I can't say how happy I am to say welcome back to the show. How are you? We're great. We're great. It's good to be back. I appreciate you having us. It's fantastic now. It's a uh, I was thinking earlier on and I was uh I was like, it's always a good day when you're talking about new bellwether music. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it's been a long time coming, but we're we're happy the day is here. Great, great. So it's called Gods. It's out on September 22nd. What can you tell us about it? Uh, so this this EP we wrote actually one of the tracks was the first song that we wrote together as Bellwether. Um it was it's our our second track Night Comes. Um it it came together really quickly um and it was when a lot of crappy stuff was going on in our lives. And I feel like this whole EP kind of has like a little bit of a a darker feel to it than what we've released so far. Um, But I I would say it's, it's really, I know on last episode, we talked about starting bellwether because it was kind of like therapy for us. And I feel like these songs really portray that we, we, I kind of had a lot to, to get off my chest and, you know, not all of them are things that are going on currently in my life, but a lot of them were about past things, past hurts and struggles. Uh, so that's kind of you'll probably hear it's it's a little bit on the darker side than what we've released so far. But I feel like it really um, says who we are a little more than than what we have out so far. And Nate, I don't know if you have anything to add on your end, because I know I know we were both going through a lot when we wrote this. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely yeah, I'd definitely say it's more on the real and and darker side. Um, but you know, with Isaac's lyrics and stuff, there's definitely a lot of hope there as well. Um, of just kind of you know coming through on the other side, you know, learning some things and you know, and and having a little bit better perspective, you know, having gone through you know different struggles and and all of that. Um. But yeah, it's the the whole record, it, the way I was going to write music, it it kind of like, I don't really feel like there's any songs on this that we really kind of struggled to write. And I feel like most of them came pretty, pre, came pretty naturally. And so, you know, it's, we've worked really hard on this and it's been kind of a long time. It's been a long process. Um, but we are, we're really happy with how everything came out and just how even just the order of the songs and just how everything flows together as a whole record or as a whole EP, we're just, we're really, we couldn't be happier. And I kind of, we, I know we talked about it last time, but you know, we've said multiple times where we, where we talk about like, even if nobody likes this, you know what I mean? Which I, I hope that's not the case, but like, even if this is just for us, like we are so proud of the, of the music that we put together with the songs that we wrote and just as, as just like a piece of work, we're just really, really proud of it. I just want to jump back to something, something Isaac said was, uh, it was the first song that you made together as Bellwether. And you were going through some tough times. You're obviously past the tough times now, but was there a fear of maybe, you know, dragging up them feelings and getting kind of bogged down in that sort of situation or sort of feeling? Yeah, I mean, I so my my wife will tell you this if you ever talk to her. I'm not good at at expressing my emotions. I'm not good at about talking about my feelings, but something happens like when I play music specifically when I play music with Nate, I just can, I I just feel like I can be really honest and kind of get off my chest what I need to get off my chest. Um, And I'm always a little fearful of putting that out to the world in case people, because I mean, a lot of the stuff I even sing about isn't specifically what I'm thinking in that moment or what I'm feeling, but it's just something I've needed to just get off my chest or something that I felt at a specific time in my life. So it is hard because all people hear is the song. So putting that out there is always a little nerve wracking, but 
but I felt like these songs needed to be done. I see. I see. And you know, how did you guys approach the recording process? Yeah. So, uh, my, the recording thing for me kind of became my COVID project. I was out of work cause you know, during COVID, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a chef. That's what I do for money. Um, <laughs> I wish I did this for money, but, um, so, uh, you know, for about seven months, I was out of, I was out of work living in my, my wife and I were living in my in-laws basement. We got displaced from Boston and we moved back. Uh, I think we covered it the last time, but, uh, so we moved back to, to Atlanta and that's when Isaac and I kind of reconnected on music and everything. And, uh, so my COVID project was basically building a recording studio in my house. And so as you can see behind me, this is where I recorded literally like all the drums for the record. So, um, you know, we moved and we have a, a new house and I've got a new little room here and everything, but the, the recording has been something where Isaac and I start with, you know, just like you would, if you were all in the same room, all in the same place, you know, we start with scratch guitars and, you know, all that to where I have something to play with, but I recorded all of the drums here and then I sent them to Isaac and then Isaac built all the tracks from there. So Isaac recorded the bass, the guitar, vocals, background vocals, synth, piano, all of that. And then we have a, a good friend in Boston uh, named Rob Wu. He plays with a band called Mission to Sleep. And he produced our, or he mixed and mastered our track, Mild Hearts. And then uh, we decided to work with him again for this full length. And so he kind of on this project became more of a producer. Isaac and I were somewhat like producing it ourselves, but he also kind of provided that third party. Here's the idea. Here's where we're at. You know, give us an objective opinion on, is this good? Is, you know, is it, and it, the, the funny thing about, like, I wouldn't think anybody who's writing music would say that their music is boring, right? But when you're going through and you're recording something, you have to you have to ask those questions of, OK, so we have all of these parts. We have a, you know, a verse and a bridge and, you know, whatever it is, you have to objectively look at it and say, OK, so is this is this interesting? Is this keeping people's attention is, you know, do we need to add something here? Do we need to switch something? And honestly, sometimes it's like, OK, so we have a verse two and a verse three. Should we? flip those and does that make more sense so having that having that third party who has not essentially nothing to do with writing the songs come in and say okay so here's what you guys are thinking here's what i'm thinking and then you're able to you know come up with a, a better idea and a better end product because you have that that perspective that's not you because sometimes you're just too close so that's kind of how we recorded it this time. So, you know, it started with me, went to Isaac, and then we went, then we sent it up to, to Rob, and then we kind of just worked, worked through all of it. So, Isaac, what about you? What, what about on your end <laughs> in your dark basement? <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I've got like a little corner in my basement where I've got my, my focus right plugged into my Mac and just my little synth. And that's, that's where I spent a ton of nights just, you know, recording for two hours here, two hours there after I put my daughter to sleep. So it it was, uh, this was definitely a labor of love, but, but we're, we're really, we're really proud of, of what we're putting out. You know, it's your first release in, I think just, over a year the last release you had was the the cover of the nirvana song i absolutely loved that by the way it's i think i said it to you at the time it was the first cover i've heard that was just as good if not better than nirvana but music, I that. <laughs> musically what has the time been like for you guys man honestly it's to be completely honest, it's been a little rough. Um, I mean, Nate and I were ready to pull our hair out with this EP, to be completely honest. Like we're, 
it's crazy because writing the songs is the beginning of the process. It's not even, to be honest, it's not even the hard part. Like recording really, really tested us this time and get, getting these songs done. Um, but I think really since last time we talked, it's been a ton of recording um, and a ton of listening back and and Nate's been really, really patient with me because I'll listen and I'll be like, Nate, I hate this song. Like, we can't release this. <laughs> and he's like, dude, just go to sleep, listen to it in the morning, and it, you, you'll be fine. Like, we'll we'll get through this. So, so there are a lot of there was a lot of that, but um, but yeah, it's really been taken up a lot by recording and just trying to be patient with ourselves and put out the best the best portions and the best song versions that we can. So Nate, you were obviously the voice of reason then. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I think this is probably Isaac, correct me if I'm wrong. This is probably, I don't know. So this is five songs. We put out five songs with bellwether and then our last band, we probably did. I don't know. 15 or 20 songs. So, I mean, Isaac and I collectively have recorded together, you know, almost 30 songs. And it's like, every time you go into the process, you learn something different about yourself, about whatever music you're playing. And I really enjoy the process. Not, I think there'd be a lot of musicians that would tell you that they don't. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a very, it's a very testing process, like demons. So we were talking to Rod, the guy that produced our record, and he was talking to us about how he really liked our approach to how we were doing it, because at least on my end, when it comes to playing the drums, I I get the best full take I possibly can. Like, I don't copy and paste. I don't. I, I start it and I play it through. And if I mess up, I start it again. Um, and so a like demon specifically for me, this was awesome. This was a day where I almost lost it. Uh, Isaac can attest to that. Uh, I had finally gotten the take exactly correct. And I was, I don't even remember what I was necessarily doing, but I had sent everything over to Isaac. And I think I probably was just, my OCD was kicking in. I think I was like, getting stuff off of my computer. And I thought that I had put my final drum logic track on my, uh, my external hard drive before I deleted it, but I hadn't. Oh my God. I had done, I had done probably just to be, you know, probably too honest. I had probably done 22 takes of this oh. song. And I had finally gotten it exactly how I wanted it. And I deleted it. Oh, and I'll go back. What's that? But, and it's over five minutes long. It's our longest song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the end is like, the end is the most difficult part recording wise of the whole, of the whole thing. And so like I had to go back through and I think I did it in two at that point because I had just like I had muscle memory like nobody's business at that point. But like it's just it's one of those things where like you when you're recording and you've you know, you've written these songs and you you have all these things going and then you go back and you listen to them 20 times again, like I said before, you get you get too close and that's like a lot of times some of the best things that you can do in any creative project is like sleep on it and come back. Because if you've listened to it, you know, once your ears are probably correct. Tenth time, your ears are not correct. Like you, you, you have this like diminishing returns when you're, when you're listening to it and you're, you're not, you're not listening to it the same you same way you were the first time so a lot of times it, it's it's about taking a break and not really trying to force it and just giving yourself a breather you know whether it's you know on, on days where i was recording and i was really in it i would stop 
I would go take my dog for a walk. I would go for a run. I would, you know, go to the store, you know, whatever it was, take a break and then come back. And it was always better at that point than it was if I was just sitting there like take 10 frustrated, throwing drumsticks and, you know, upset, you know, so it's just recording, recording is challenging because you, you think, you think your take was good. And then you listen back, you're like, nope, let's do it again. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's definitely been, it's definitely been a challenge and doing it yourself is, is even more challenging because you're, you're your own last line of defense, you know, because you don't have somebody else you know, behind the glass kind of like (laughs) really, really keeping you accountable. It's, it's all you, or it's all your bandmate who, you know, you send it to and you're like, yeah, that's uh, you should probably hit that one again, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. And you know, when it comes to releasing it, you're taking a very unconventional route. Well, unconventional these days. Anyway, you're not releasing singles. You're just releasing it all as one. Yeah, we had this conversation with each other um, because we didn't know what we were going to do. We we were like, should we do an EP? Should we do a full length? Should we just release these songs separately? Um, But I don't I don't honestly remember, Nate, you might. But what what kind of was our final decision on on doing an EP? But I do feel like the album is still alive. Uh, I'll a lot of my favorite bands release full length albums that I listen to from start to finish. And they're more of an experience than just a single. Um, and I mean, I think another, another reason is I feel like it gives a little bit more legitimacy to a band. If you have a collection of songs that kind of work together. Um, and I feel like these songs needed to be together. I think that might have been one of the main things. Um, they have a very similar theme to them. Uh, but Nate, yeah, I don't know if you remember exactly what made us fall on doing an EP, but that's kind of the approach I remember. Yeah, we. So we have. I think we have probably a total of probably 17 to 20 songs total. Um, And we have when we were coming up to this process and we had, you know, released a few things and, you know, we were kind of figuring out what was next. um, We kind of like Isaac said, we had some songs that kind of had similar themes. So these ones we decided to do Gods as an EP. And then we have another set of songs, which (laughs) at some point we are going to start recording. Um, <laughs> we might need a, some, some, uh, rehab after this one. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so we have a second half that's going to be called idols and it's basically going to be two halves of the same thing. So essentially we will have a full length that will kind of work together as kind of like two, two pieces, which, you know, if maybe, you know, maybe we can start saving now and we might be able to afford vinyl, you know, uh, in like 10 years. Um, but, uh, so with the with the concept of not releasing a single, one we felt like these songs worked together specifically as an EP. They all have the same theme. We even we know we notice it because we did it, but I don't know if you've listened to it, but when when the EP ends, we take the chorus or no, I'm sorry, the bridge from Night Comes and we bring it back as a theme at the end of gods in that big kind of like heavy ending to the ep and so we wanted to we didn't want to steal that you know we we did that intentionally we brought that back because it was such a good theme for the for the whole entire ep where isaac says is it god or is it the devil like um like bringing that whole thing to fruition and we didn't want to release a single just to be honest, like whenever anybody releases singles, I'm so sick and tired. Like if they, if they release like a whole record and it's 10 songs and they release three singles, I don't want to listen to those songs by the time that record comes out. And then, so then I can't actually enjoy that whole 
record as a piece of work because I'm like, okay, so they released track two as a single and I listened to it a hundred times already. So I'm going to skip that one. And it, it, I just felt, we felt like it just kind of stole that, that, um, that enjoyment like, of, yeah, that newness of being able to like, I know this is like old school, but like putting in a CD, sitting on the couch in front of a good pair of speakers and just like sitting down and just experiencing it from track one to track five and being able to say, man, that was really great. Like I really, the transitions were great. This song worked perfectly going into this song. And we, we spent a lot, Isaac, how many times did we go to Mazzy's drinking beer, trying to figure out what song was going to going to go into what song and what order it was going to be. Like it, it was very intentional. It was a very long process trying to figure it out. And, you know, we wanted to, we want people to experience it that way because we, we really put a lot of time and effort thinking about it. Ah. And, you know, for the listener, then when they pick up, well, not pick up this record, but when they turn it on, is there any specific themes or messages you hope they get from it? Uh, Nate touched on it a little bit. Um, you know, the lyrics are a bit darker on this one, but there definitely is a theme of hope to it. You know, I wrote a lot of these songs about bad things in my life, but I'm here, I'm happy, you know, I'm getting to play music with my best friend. And and I feel like you can feel the hope in them, even though they're dark songs. So I, I do hope people listen to them can relate to the dark themes, but can understand that there's hope, you know, on the other side and just to kind of keep, keep pushing through those, those really bad times. Right. Right. I like it. I like it. And you know, something that intrigues me with records is I'm always thinking when you had the initial idea and then through the whole process, how does the final product match up to the, the original vision? I mean, I think it's very close. Um, Nate was talking about our buddy Rob uh, that, that produced the record. He definitely, and we asked him to please be honest and he he called me out on some choruses or some parts here and there. Um, the the chorus for "Worlds Die Inside Us," the the opening track, was completely different when we came into what that what we sent him. Uh, and he was like, you know, the chorus is fine, but it doesn't hit me. So I was like, man, <laughs> I gotta. I got to rethink a song that we thought was done, which I mean, Nate and I pretty much, we always come in with an open mind and we want people to be honest and not just be like, oh yeah, it's good and not really care. But it still is really hard to get out of that mindset of, okay, this is the chorus. I need to completely forget everything I know and write a new chorus. Um, so I think, I think for that one, I, I just recorded the guitar and I listened to it in my car just over and over with just the guitar and tried to listen to it with new ears and forget the old chorus. But I think it elevated the song. Um, And most of the songs are pretty much exactly how we wrote, not exactly, but they're very similar to how we wrote them. And Rob is just really good at elevating them. Yeah, because like I said before, it's like, you know, we when you write something, you know, you have that third party to where somebody can say, hey, like, yeah, this is good, but I think it can be better. And and that's also what can be really hard about recording, because anytime there there's, in my opinion, there's two like specific difficult things about anything that you put out to the public and anything that you do creatively because there's always there's always a personal a very very personal element to it because you're being vulnerable and so when you come into the recording process and you're recording with somebody else like i remember this it wasn't this project but it was a project that isaac and i did before 
like we came came in with the song to pre-production and we were super excited about it and we played it and the guy was like absolutely not oh man it's like <laughs> yeah it's like absolutely not i'm i'm not i'm not putting that on the record we're like that's what? tough We've been playing yeah. the song for three years. We loved it. It was great. You know, we thought it was great. All these things is like in the current form, it's not going on the record. We literally, Isaac, I don't know if you remember that. We literally stayed in that studio until one, yeah. two, three o'clock in the morning and completely rewrote an entire song. And that next day, again, not this project, but that was one of the most difficult days for me as a musician in the in the studio the next day. Because I had three years of muscle memory playing the song one way. And then overnight, I had to completely relearn the entire song and then actually play it to a click track and actually, you know, do it. Really difficult. Back to my point. Um, to be able to come in with something so personal as music and have somebody just go, sorry, like this isn't like to Isaac's point, like, sorry, the chorus just isn't hitting me. Can you go ahead and like completely reimagine it and completely sing it a completely different way and come at it? from a different angle, it's really difficult to do something like that. And then the second part is like, once, once it's out there and then people start having their critiques about what it is that you just poured yourself into it, you know, it, music is a vulnerable thing and putting it out to the public and then, you know, having people hear it and listen to it and <laughs> give their opinions on something that they have essentially nothing to do with. It's, it's, all of it's really difficult. It's really rewarding. And I really would not change any of it, you know, at all, but it's uh, yeah. The, the songs are remotely, you know, the same as, as the original, but there's definitely parts where, you know, we go back and we're like, Oh yeah, that was, that was a cool idea. Or, you know, Isaac and I will, you know, just, <laughs> I remember the, the on, um, on night comes, we were really, really struggling with the second verse, or I'm sorry, the third verse. We were really struggling with the third verse because we we're like, ah, it's just kind of like the rest of it, you know. Again, is it is it interesting? Is it moving? Is it you know keeping people's attention? And I was just like, I think I sent Isaac a text. I was like, all right, buddy, I got an idea. If it sucks, you gotta let me know. And I I set <laughs> I set my drums up. I grabbed like a really small Tom and I just basically overdubbed this thing and put tons of reverb on it and basically did this like Phil Collins esque, you know, like Tom part and like built this, you know, this like this essentially beat, you know, this like really echoey, you know, drum beat thing. I sent it over and I'm like, I'm like, this guy's going to think I'm awful. He's never going to like, playing a band with me ever again because i said this like janky like 80s phil collins you know terrible version of phil phil collins in the air tonight drum fill thing and then it ended up like again it started with this like really random idea and then it went to isaac and he's like okay great well let's let's do this and then it went to rob and he's like yeah i see what you're doing here but let's do it this way and now it's basically all three of us all collaborating on one verse and it's great now. Like it's super interesting. It comes together. It really brings the song together. It's kind of a, you know, weird element, but in a good way on the, on the record, but it was really three people coming together with one really weird idea. I had at one o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> on a Monday by myself in a room. Mm. You know what I mean? Like but I think that's the, 10 seconds of music we spent a ton of time on that part yeah <laughs> hours yeah. hours on that part yeah. but anyways but that's that's kind of a testament to the process though you know of where it's just like you have to come in with it's personal right like uh like there's that old saying it's not business or it's not personal it's business right but it's like you come into it going okay yeah this is a really personal thing but like I need to like let that go for a minute and be able to like embarrass myself of like thinking of a really terrible idea and just putting it out there to somebody I trust like Isaac and saying, look, this may suck really bad, but we probably can come up with something from it. You know? I like it. I like it. And I love that we can, even the listeners now can see so much insights into the process. 
But the first thing I noticed when I listened to it was that, well, the first thing I said to myself was, holy crap, you guys have gone from here to up here. It's just, it's a massive sound, you know, it's just massive and it's so noticeable. But personally, how do you guys think you've evolved as musicians since even we last spoke? I mean, Nate touched on it too. Like we, every recording process, you you just learn so much about yourself. Um, <clears throat> I'm not great at recording. I am impatient. I just want it done. So with that mindset, I had to redo a lot of stuff because I would send it to Rob and he'd be like, this wasn't recorded right. And so... I think just like honing, honing the way we record and things like that have have really elevated how we do things. Um, I feel like Nate constantly looks to improve his drum setup with mics and with just the way he his his brain works totally differently than mine, and that's a very good thing. I, I feel like uh, most of the elevated sound is because of Nate and he can, he can kind of touch on what, what he's done, but I do feel like we've grown a lot as people too. Um, you know, life is always difficult. It never is easy, but I also feel like maybe coming through a lot of that hurt and a lot of those bad things that we were going through when we wrote these songs, and recording them more from like a happy place and a place of like, we got through this, that might have something to do with it. I don't know really, but I, I feel like that has something to do with it. We, we recorded it from a happier place. Um, but as far as the sound, I would attribute that to Nate and, and what he's done with his drums. So Nate, if you want to kind of touch on any of that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm somebody who I'm not, I don't know. I, I'm not very happy when I'm, when I, when I'm not pushing myself, sometimes this is not a good thing. I'm going to own that, but like, I'm always pushing myself to, to do things better and to, to like be be better than I was the day before. It might just be because I've been in the culinary world for the last 15 years and that's just kind of like expected. Um, but for me with drumming, you know, I've, I've been playing for 29 years at this point, which seems crazy. Um, but with me, when it comes to the, like playing of drums, like there's kind of this thing where you can kind of these days where you can just kind of copy and paste things, you know, and you can kind of just go, okay, cool. I got the the best verse I can. So that's it. And I'm going to move on. You know, I wanted to challenge myself this time to, again, like I said earlier, do what like the best full take I possibly could. And for me with the, with the miking and the, the room and all these things, each time that I came into the, into the song, I kind of try to think about it as if I, I mean, this is my studio, but like as if this were my own recording studio and that Isaac and I owned this recruit recording studio and we're like trying to get other people to come and record here, you know, and, and also like, okay, so this is the drum setup I have, right? The, these are the mics I have for this song. What is it that I, that we want it to sound like with worlds? a big song you know there's a lot of guitars there's you know a lot of things happening so like how can i get the biggest drum set like i only have this room you know what i mean like i only have this square footage of this room so how can i use the space that i have and the mics that i have as you know limited or as cheap or as whatever as they are what can i do to make this this better because drum <laughs> Drumming is, you know, it's a lot 
more difficult is not exactly the right way to say it because recording guitars and bass and all that stuff is very difficult but there's different things different technologies now where you know if you you don't necessarily have to record a guitar amp anymore right like there's a lot of guitar sims and all these amp sims and things that you can use to get like a really great sound drums not so much and so like you have to be able to really imaginative on what you have because if i don't have like you know a, a a room with like a 40 foot ceiling and you know all these you know expensive mics you know i gotta get i gotta get pretty creative on you know how i record my drums and how how they how they sound so for me that's where i start where i just kind of look at the song and go okay so like what is it that isaac and i are trying to get get through or get across here and how can i record them in a way that that they're going to be huge and they're going to sound really good and you know i I've, I've made the best use of 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 what i have at my disposal you know see i see and you know i suppose time is uh starting to slip away from us we better start talking a bit about concerts so since we last spoke how has gigging been have you played many gigs um we played since we last spoke we played uh, we played at Vinyl, which was in uh, it's a, a cool little venue in Atlanta. We played with a band called the Mysterines, which they're from the UK. Um, they're like doing huge things now. Um, and another band called Crooked Teeth, which is it's like a single like guy who plays out of uh, L.A. kind of has like a Blink-182 vibe to, to what he's doing. Um, you know, one of the, you know, difficult things right now is I'm in Texas and Isaac's in Atlanta. And so we, we have to be really, uh, really intentional on being able to play and like, you know, schedule shows, which we got a couple offers to play shows in the fall and it just didn't, uh, didn't work out. Um, but honestly, the last little bit we've recording has literally been everything that we were able to do. So once we have, you know, once we get this EP out and we get a little traction, we're going to start, you know, concentrating on that a little bit more. But this this uh, this EP has definitely taken all of our bandwidth for the last uh, for the last year. I actually had no idea that you guys were so far apart now. Like, was there a stage where you were uncertain about the band or were you always 100% no matter if we're on different sides of the continent, we'll make it work. Yeah. We've been, we've been a hundred percent sure about it. I mean, there, it's been difficult for sure. Um, but I mean, me and Nate are going to play music together until we die. Like we we've, I, I just know that's how it's going to be. We've talked about it and, you know, even if people, have stopped listening 20 years ago. Like we'll still be playing music together. Uh, it, you know, it sucks being so far apart, but, but we make it work. We talk every day and bounce ideas off each other. So I, I know that'll, that'll continue forever. Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Very glad to hear it. And any great concerts that you've attended since? Uh, my wife and I just, uh, my wife and I just went to, uh, since we're, you know, kind of in the middle of the United States now, we went to, uh, Oklahoma city to go see, uh, Manchester orchestra, Jimmy Eat world and a band called middle kids. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. They're out of Australia, but they're a really cool indie rock band, but we had a blast. It was, it was a great show. Right. Right. I'll have to, I'll have to look into them now and, uh, Manchester Orchestra is one that keeps popping up lately in interviews. I uh, I keep meaning to dive into them. They're they're amazing. Yeah, they're they're an, an Atlanta band as well. Um, but they're they're incredible. And if you ever get a chance to see them live, definitely do it. Mm, yeah, I've they're fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. actually I got back last night from Boston. I went. My wife and I fly up. Uh, fly up. Flew up to Boston <laughs> to see. Death. For cutie and the postal service they're doing a 20 year anniversary of transatlanticism and give up and it was amazing had a great time oh cool cool and uh 
in the the period since your last release up to now, when you're not releasing music, you're not playing gigs. How are you staying connected with your fans? Yeah, this has definitely been a struggle for us. We we talk about it a lot. Um, <clears throat> staying active on social media, it it it's difficult because we both have full time jobs and families, and it it it's hard. We've talked about how we're not good at it and how we need to get better at it. So really just trying to stay active on social media is, is what we need to be doing and what we struggle with doing. Um, but it, it's that constant battle of knowing what to post, knowing how to engage with people, keeping people's interest. Cause it's very easy to just for people to forget about you if you're not, if you're not constantly, you know, on social media, posting stories, but yeah, we, we, we've been trying and it's, it's been, it's been difficult. I know that feeling all too well. I, uh, I'm a third one that's not good at it at all. And I got so sick of actually fighting with the algorithms that I decided, you know what, this is my project. I'll do it my way. If I want to post, I'll post. If I don't, I don't. So I, for, the last couple of months I literally post when there's a new episode and if a guest has new music coming out I'll post about the new music and that's it there's no more kind of sitting around trying to think of anything to post that will get engagement you know what I mean absolutely it's yeah. hard and you just like I just feel like it's as, as intuitive as we're told it is it's just like it all of it just feels really intangible. Like you just, you really never know what actually works. You never know what people are actually seeing. And so at the end of it, I don't know. I, maybe it was Dave Grohl who said it, like if you're doing something good and you're like pouring your, you know, pouring your heart into it, like people are going to find you. And so like, we're, we're just going to put as, you know, as much good music out as we can and promote it as much as we can. Cause we, we love it. And you know, if, if people are feeling it, they're going to tell, they're going to tell their friends, like, you know, we, we still try to find music, new music, literally every day. We have a text thread with our friends that we send music every day. And so I just feel like it, you know, social media is social media. It's never going to go away. It's just going to get worse. Um, and you know, I think it's just, it's about putting out, we're just trying to put out things that we truly believe in and trying to, you know, link ourselves with other people who also are, you know, believing what we're doing and what they're doing. And so for us, it's, it's just about, you know, we, we want to connect with people and we want people to connect with our music, you know, and sometimes it's really difficult to figure out the best way to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I hear that. All right. So looking to the future how would you guys like to evolve you know what will you be like in say five years time yeah i mean nate nate has been touching on it a bit like we're we just really want to continue putting out music we we have a lot more songs that are unreleased that we really want to get out um and i'd love in five years time for us to have another EP, another full length or two, and, you know, hopefully be able to start doing music more than we are now. I mean, right now it's, it's a hobby that we're paying for, which I mean, I, I wouldn't change it for the world and we'll keep doing it forever, but, but it would be nice to be able to focus on it a little more. So that would, that would really be my five year dream is if we could really do it a lot more than we are now. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I, I would I would really like for us to be able to, you know, get to a point where we're, you know, playing shows. And, you know, I think some there's a lot of bands who don't really have to do that. And they just, you know, they kind of a presence online. But I I love I mean, this whole thing is called the concerts that made us right. Like there's nothing better to me than going to a good show and you know going and playing live there's it's it's an absolute blast like even you know isaac and i playing you know in a dive bar in atlanta with terrible sound you know can't even hear each other but you know it's it's just 
you know, th- there's nothing better than that, you know? And so I would like for us to be able to, to have that always be a part of what we're doing, regardless of whether we're, you know, living in the same city or not being able to, to really be able to, to play regularly and be able to, you know, I, 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 being a chef is cool and, you know, makes me money and all that stuff. But if I, I've always said that if I got the opportunity to play music for a living, I would, I would drop it in a second and never look back, you know, and I still truly believe that. And I, I would love to be able to do bellwether for, for a living. It would be, that would legitimately be a dream come true. So in five years, you know, it would be really cool if we could be able to, you know, really, really actually do this and be able to function this way, you know, might be it that might be a you know a pipe dream or whatever but i i would really like to just put it out there you know and just <laughs> see if we can see if we can make it a reality you know yeah yeah well you know what i'm putting it down right here in exactly five years time you guys are coming back on onto the podcast to tell me the dates that you're playing on your tour all right <laughs> i love it i love it and we'll we'll be back we'll always be back it's always good talking to you <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I suppose we'll we'll dive into the last couple of questions. So I uh, asked you these the last time, I think, but I'm intrigued to see if your answers have changed. So if you could see any musician for one night only in concert, who would it be? I think mine's the same. I don't 100% remember what I said, but it would be Queen. Like that that's my answer i think that was probably my answer before but that's that's definitely so. still how i feel <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember what my answer was last time i probably should have <laughs> gone back and listened to it uh well i think I, i'm gonna say one that is still actually possible for me to see that i haven't been able to see yet and that would be like the smashing pumpkins and billy corgan um that would be that that's one band that i i missed twice in my life and uh and i have again and uh it's not exactly the the one the original lineup but it's like 75 percent of the original lineup these days so uh i think that would be uh i think that would be super cool yeah definitely definitely i'd love that myself and if you had to be locked in a room with any musician from history for 24 hours who would it be Shocker, mine's Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Never would have guessed. <laughs> yeah, I just, man, his approach to music was was unlike anything I've seen. And just someone that someone that got it was born to play music, and his mind, I just feel like worked in in ways that that most musicians don't. I would love to love to just see it in action. Yeah. I'll go with a different answer because I'm pretty sure the last time I said Dave Grohl, which I still would like to go, I still like to meet him and be in a room with him because I think that would just be awesome. But I think my my updated answer probably would be a drummer. He's my favorite drummer on the planet. There's a guy named Steve Jordan, and he played. He's played for a lot of people, but he's playing with the Rolling Stones right now. Um, he's played with John Mayer. He's played with a lot of people. Like his. Drumming style is not the same as mine, but his approach to music and recording, similarly to what Isaac's talking about, like his brain just works differently than mine. I would love for my brain to work like his, but um, anyway, so it, but he's also a producer and he also records people and he also does a lot of things that are on the different side of drumming because a lot of times drumming can just be just like, okay, cool. So, you know, I recorded my parts and that's it, you know, but he's more involved in the, in the full process of, of recording and producing and all these things. So I would, I would love to be able to be in a room with him and have him show me how he gets his sounds and how he plays his drums and how he thinks about things. It would be incredible. That'd be a really good one, actually. Yeah. And the final one. So what song would appear on the soundtrack to your life? Ooh, I would have to say De Gosser by Brand New is probably my favorite song ever written. Um, at, at least like a little more modern. Um, but I, I would have to say that song. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, mine, even though like it's it's not necessarily like a depressing theme, but like 
because my life's not necessarily depressing, but uh, song 23 by, by Jimmy Eat World. It's like, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. And it's just like, we, it may just be fresh in my mind because, you know, we just saw them a couple of weeks ago and I got to watch them play it for the first time in like 16 years. And it was just like, it was just kind of a otherworldly spiritual experience. But uh, yeah, I'd have to say 23 by, by Jimmy Eat World. So just an epic song. Great choices. Great ones. And before I let you go, then, is there any future plans set in stone you want to mention? Uh, I I think just like Nate was saying, we're what we're trying to do is release kind of like a second half of this, another EP called Idols, and we're trying to combine it into one work and hopefully release it on vinyl. Um, so right now that's just a dream because a lot of work has to be done before then. But, but I, I would say that is set in stone. I just, I don't know how long it's going to take. Hopefully it doesn't take forever, but, but that's, that's what we, we are sh- shooting for right now. Brilliant. I like it. I like it. I'll, uh, I'll definitely have to order one of them vinyls whenever they come out. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> listen guys it's always a pleasure and i can't wait for the next time we appreciate you always it's always great talking to you hey, thanks brian thanks for always always giving us a spot to talk you know
Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. And if you're interested in signing up the Band Builder Academy, use the link in the show notes below and enter the code CONCERTS and you'll receive 10% off. So, until next time, keep rocking. Hey, hey, what are you guys still doing there? The show is over. It's over. You can go home. Go on. We'll see you next time. We'll be here. Bye.